We've got a red flag here in the uh, eastern part of, correction, western part of uh, Utah, and that is for low relative humidity. <coughs> it's a pretty good wind today. Uh, child abduction emergency, I could understand if that was over Las Vegas, but not a lot going on in Elko normally. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what that is. Uh, interesting uh, weather shaping up today. We've got the, uh, what we've got over us right now, but the real story is going to be another severe day out on the east side. Uh, the current thinking is that we've got this upper level low that's uh, spinning around, and, and we just got that first wave this morning with that little lightning and rain we just had, and that's going to work its way across. In the meantime, we've got a whole bunch of moisture and heat pumping up here on the east side, and when you collide that into the uh, energy coming across, that's a real good setup for uh, severe weather. Large hail, tornadoes, uh, chance of straight line damaging winds, uh, probably start to fire here late afternoon, work its way across, and really get severe as it gets into the very rich dew points in uh, uh, North and uh, South Dakota. Not unusual, um, but uh, you know, strange that we're having so much severe weather uh, on, the, on our eastern side this time of year. Okay, here's what we looked at this morning. You can kind of almost see the, the circulation that's developed already. Uh, we're getting some pretty good rain out of this. Uh, I know we had some starts over on the Helena yesterday and some of that bug kill, but I think we're going to be putting some rain on that, so you know that may knock some of that down. Picked up a few lightning bolts with this stuff this morning, but I think the majority of it was wet. Okay, here's the uh, visual shot. And you can, you can really see the uh, center of the uh, upper level low. It's right here on the border. It's already springing some uh, uh, scattered bolts there. And these rain bands are just going to circulate around. It's kind of interesting that, you know, for this kind of year, this, this time of year, this is more of a, of a late fall, uh, early spring setup than a, a summertime setup. But uh, anyway, here was the lightning. Got a few bolts down here by the park. And then... A little bit of instability already forming from uh, last night and continuing on on the east side. Uh, the one thing that may save their bacon today is that this cloud cover can stay thick enough over there they may not quite reach their full heating potential. But you can see there's little breaks in the action already as this stuff uh, moves and thins out. So I, I would think they've probably got their hands full today. Uh, right now, enjoy this little sucker hole that we're in because you can already see we've got more cloudiness approaching us and we'll probably start to pick up isolated thunderstorms again, rain showers, uh, generally that kind of thing. Uh, cool and windy is the order of the day. Wet, gust to 20. Um, just, you know, temperatures maybe struggling into the uh, high 60s today and tomorrow. Uh, the only real fire weather that I'd like to show you is towards the uh, weekend, we really start to ridge out, and this is a picture of uh, mid out of uh, temperatures at about 5,000 feet overlaid with the upper pattern. This is a classic Hane 6 kind of day, and that's Saturday afternoon. So, any sort of luck at all, the lightning that came down hit the dead tree, dead tree didn't get rain, we might get a couple of pop-ups Thursday, Friday, certainly you know, Saturday is looking like a critical fire weather day. You know, we're going to make that transition from this kind of cool, wet to uh, it's going to really feel like the summertime by the end of the week. So, you know, hope springs eternal. We may actually get some business here uh, uh, with some holdovers. And then the, uh, there is some pretty good discrepancy with the uh, model solutions out past the weekend. Uh, my favorite European model wants to bring a pretty strong dry cold front through a Sunday where this model generally wants to keep us in the southwest flow. The kicker is going to be how much moisture we can get spinning up in here too. This is a, not only is this a great Haines 6 kind of day, but this is also where we tend to get that dry lightning down here in the maybe sapphires, but certainly down here in the uh, um, B bar D and uh, places like Dillon and uh, out towards uh, uh, Livingston, Bozeman. They're still fairly green right now, but you know, let's face it, we're in the summertime and, you know, we're going to be temperatures in the 90s. Wouldn't be surprised to see the humidities get down to 10, 12 percent. So, you know, we'll just have to uh, watch how that all pans out. Any questions for me? Thank you, Mike. You bet. National scene.
All right, the SIP report. Uh, IA activity was light, 169 new fires. Uh, there's three new large fires. Uh, three large fires <coughs> contained, uh, or three large fires contained, 19 uncontained large fires. Um, we have three type two teams committed and now two NEMO teams. The two new, or the three new large fires are once at 8K, uh, the rail, rail belt complex, uh, three different fires uh, outside of Fairbanks includes uh, the previously reported Minto Flat South Fire, 12 miles southwest of Banana, uh, AK, Black Spruce, Tussock, with Nick's Hardwood Litter, running fire with group tree torching, uh, a lot of structures threatened. Uh, the other large fire is in Oregon, um, and it is uh, out of John Day, uh, timber and grass creeping and smoldering, short range spotting. And the uh, third one is the Guthrie Fire in Arizona uh, on the Coronado, 21 miles northeast of Tucson, open chaparral brush, moderate fire activity. Um, and that is about it. Uh, AK is still on top of PLP. 